4.1 day three, even more about sampling. Up to this point we've talked about uh, basic simple random samples uh, as well as stratified random samples and we're going to learn another random sampling technique uh, within these notes. In italics here it says although a stratified random sample can sometimes give more precise information about a population than an SRS, both sampling methods are hard to use when populations are large and spread out over a wide area. In that situation, we prefer a method that selects groups of individuals that are near one another. And then the definition here, the new, uh, the new method, uh, is to get a cluster sample. So to get a cluster sample, start by classifying the population into groups of individuals that are located near each other, called clusters. Then choose an SRS of the cluster, so randomly choose those different groups of people that are near each other. All individuals in the chosen clusters are included in the sample. Okay, so why would we look to do a cluster sample um, where we actually just randomly select groups of people and the people in those groups are part of our sample? Well, uh, the first one here, it says often used for practical reasons like, you know, saving time or money. And the second one, it works best when clusters look like the population on a smaller scale. And to me, right away, I think that means like a little mini population. So if I can have all these little clusters that look like little mini populations, and that would actually give me a pretty good representative sample of the whole population. So if we can identify those groups, those little clusters that we can find, hopefully they look like little mini populations, uh, that would actually give us a really good group, again, to represent our population for our sample. So the first example here, uh, there's really not a ton of work to be done. Um, it's just to kind of illustrate when you might use cluster sampling or when you could see it. It says a large high school assigns its students to homerooms alphabetically by last name to achieve 25 students in each homeroom. The school administration is considering a new schedule and would like student input. Administrators decide to survey 200 randomly selected students. It would be difficult to track down an SRS of 200 students, so the administration opts for a cluster sample of the homerooms. Now, would it truly be difficult to, you know, map out an SRS, uh, you know, a totally random sample of 200 students? Maybe not, but in this case, we'll assume it's, it's difficult to actually obtain 200 students at random. So what they're going to do is they're just going to do a cluster sample. It says, the principal who knows some statistics takes a simple random sample of eight homerooms and gives the survey to all 25 students in each homeroom. So if he's just going to randomly select some of the homerooms, that actually gives us a really easy way to obtain those 200 students. So of all the homerooms in the school, he's just going to randomly select eight of them. And those are like our eight clusters. And since there's 25 kids in each room, that gives us our random sample of 200 kids. So each kid inside each of those clusters is included in the sample. And I think homerooms that's a really good illustration and a great way to do mini populations. All right, let's take a look at example two. It says, you want to take a survey of LPHS students. Describe how you would use each of the following sampling methods to select 100 students to complete the survey. And part A says stratified random sample. So the first thing we'd have to come up with for the stratified random sample is Think of what the groups are going to be. Like, what's that characteristic or that variable that we're going to stratify on? Those will be our strata. Those will be our groups. So we've got to define that outright before we start. Um, a great example for Lake Park High School, a uh, different way to look at it would probably just be grade level. Freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. And that's just one example. Uh, after we define the strata, we go to each grade level, and if we're looking for 100 students, we'll do an SRS of 25 students from each grade. So we'll randomly select 25 freshmen, randomly select 25 sophomores, and so on. And that'll give us our 100 total students for our sample. But it will have been stratified 25 students from each grade. So that gives us our result, our 100 students in our stratified random sample.
And then part B, how would you get a cluster sample of Lake Park students? So if you could think of uh, groups of students who aren't that different from each other maybe, they represent little mini populations, and then we could randomly sample from those groups. So one idea I had, uh, what, what are the clusters going to be? Uh, why don't we use the study halls as clusters, right? There's all sorts of students in there. There's athletes, non-athletes, kids who have jobs, kids who don't have jobs, kids who are in AP classes, non-AP classes. So the study halls, and you know, it's not perfect, but it might be a good way to uh, represent the clusters, and then we can randomly select study halls to include kids in our samples. Another great one kids tell me, inst instead of study halls, they say use lunch periods. And we could randomly select you know, uh, a couple lunch periods to get kids in our sample. But let's assume we, we use the study halls, and just for the sake of simplicity, let's assume there's 20 kids in each study hall. So if there's 20 kids in, all, in every single study hall, we could just randomly select five study halls, and that would give us 100 kids in our cluster sample. Right, example three is the last example we're going to do for these notes, and then we're going to stop. Uh, it says, a school librarian wants to know the average number of pages in all the books in the library. Isn't that an interesting question? The library has 20,000 books arranged by type, fiction, biography, history, and so on, in shelves that hold about 50 books each. Those shelves are weighed down by about 50 books each. Part A says, explain how to select a simple random sample of 500 books. So let's go back to the definition of simple random sample. That means every single book right, has a chance to be in the sample. So that's actually probably the most difficult here. Um, but we can actually think of a way to do it. Uh, we just have to start by assigning each of the books a label. And there's 20,000 of them, right? So assign each of the books a distinct label from 1 to 20,000. Go ahead and number those books off. And in line with our AP scoring rubric, how are we going to randomly choose those? Uh, we'll use the random number generator on our calculator, or I suppose you could do the hat method. That seems a little excessive, but use the random number generator in our calculator to produce 500 unique numbers from 1 to 20,000. So I'm really going to stress here, like, well, what, what happens if I get a repeated number? I'm going to ignore the repeats. I'm going to uh, randomly sample my calculator until I have 500 unique numbers because I don't want to see any books twice in this case. And once we got those 500 numbers down, that's going to, get, that's going to tell us what books. We just got to go get them off the shelf and see how many pages are in them. So these 500 unique numbers represent the books that are going to be included in our sample. So that is a simple random sample. Give each book a number. There's 20,000, so how about 1 to 20,000? We start numbering them off. Uh, we use our calculator to randomly generate 500 unique numbers. Be clear with the repeats. We're going to ignore those in this case. And then those 500 books that correspond to those unique numbers, those are the ones that's gonna, that are going to be in our sample. So part B says explain how to select a stratified random sample of 500 books. Explain your choice of strata and one reason why this method might be chosen. So you could probably think of a couple different ways to stratify books in the library. Well, one thing you might come up with uh, in the example I'm going to use is, how about the type of book? So fiction, nonfiction, etc. So different types of book, you go, to di you go to different sections to see different types of books. So if those are our strata, we want to take an SRS of each type of book. Well, now it kind of depends on how many types there are. So just to ensure fairness, I'm not exactly sure how many types there are in the library, for example, but to ensure fairness, we'll sample the same number of each type of book. And that'll give us our stratified random sample of 500 books. So are there other ways to go about stratifying the books? Sure. Uh, but this is just one example. Um, you identify those strata, 
those differences, and then you go to each one and you take an SRS within each one, doing the same number uh, so it's all fair to get to 500. So part C says explain how to select a cluster sample of 500 books. Explain your choice of cluster and one reason why this method might be chosen. Okay, so just as a reminder, uh, clusters are formed by locating groups of individuals that are near each other. And that's going to be key for this one. Groups of indi individuals that are near each other to act as our clusters. And it's making a larger sample easier for the librarian. So if you haven't come up with this one yet, um, I think if you read those directions closely, it says it's arranged by type. We saw that. But it says the books are on shelves that hold about 50 books each. So I think a great way to do a cluster sample in this case would just let the shelves represent our clusters. I mean, there's a group of 50 books on each, cell, on each shelf. So it might be really easy for us to treat those as clusters and then randomly, uh, randomly select some shelves to use in our sample. And we could get to... Uh, we could get to uh, our 500 books really quickly by just sampling 10 shelves. So to define that, we can use the shelves, 50 books each, as our clusters. And if we're trying to get to 500 books, well, we can randomly select 10 clusters or shelves. Um, we would have to number those off but that could be easily done. And then we randomly select 10, and then the books on those 10 shelves should give us our 500 books for our cluster sample. So just to be clear, number the shelves from 1 to 400, because there will be 400 shelves in the library if the library has 20,000 books, and then generate an SRS of 10 shelves. You can use your calculator or the hat method. And then use all the books from those 10 selected shelves as our sample. And just to be clear, where's that 400 coming from? Um, well, I'm just going to go ahead and assume the way the problem's organized. If there's 20,000 books and each shelf is holding 50 books, then we can assume there's 20,000 divided by 50, which is 400. So there's 400 shelves. We'll randomly choose from those. So it seems like cluster sampling, uh, definitely probably most efficient, most, I don't want to say effective, but easiest and quickest way to sample 500 books at any given time in the library. Uh, so what's a drawback, a potential drawback of each one of those methods? Let's start with part A, just the simple SRS. Um, what drawbacks are obvious? Uh, there could be a ton of variability. Anytime you do a completely random sample, um, you know, just by random chance, we could get all huge books, uh, we could get all really short books. So there could be a ton of variability if we just do a totally random sample, uh, like the one part A, just the SRS. Um, only estimates the overall average page length. Meaning it doesn't care about any specific type, uh, fiction, nonfiction, all those different types. It just cares about the overall average page length of any given book in the library. So we could see a ton of variability in that number. Not to mention, probably the biggest drawback with this one is it'd be crazy time consuming to label all the books from 1 to 20,000 and then go ahead and do go pick out those 500 randomly select, uh, random individuals from the shelves. In the part B, we talked about uh, doing the stratified sample. What a potential drawback of that be? I mean, none of these are without their drawbacks, right? So uh, for stratified, if we just go to every single type, the biography books, the history books, uh, there may not be very many books to sample some, from for some types. Right? Maybe we're really short on art books or something. So to be fair, we had to sample the same number from each. That may throw our results off a ton because we don't have a very big group. We have a small sample size for maybe some of uh, the history books or the biography books. Uh, so if there's not many books to sample from, that's going to influence the results. Now, I don't know this library for sure, so I can't say for sure 
I'm just saying, depending on the type of books we use as strata, some of those may, may be very small groups that we have to consider that if we only have 500 books in our sample, they could strongly influence our results. And then the last one, Part C, we talked about uh, the cluster sampling. So when we look at the clusters, when we go to each shelf and sample from each shelf, uh, the clusters used, those shelves, may not be good represented, like, they may not represent the whole population well, especially considering how the shelves are organized. So they may not be many populations on those shelves, right? It may not be little tiny populations. Um, you could find a shelf of really thick books, for example, depending on what type it is or how the books are organized. So although it's the quickest and most efficient, the cluster sampling in this case, um, it, may, it may not be the best depending on which shelf. Shelves end up being selected for our sample um, and the type of books that are on those shelves, whether they be all of one kind, whether they be all like bigger books or smaller books, uh, that could influence our results too, although it does seem like this is the quickest, most efficient way in this case to do this cluster sampling. So now we've got three sampling methods that we've talked about to choose from. We've got the basic overall simple random sample where you label everybody and try to randomly select individuals to be in your sample. You've got the stratified random sample where you define the strata early on, you know what groups you're going to look at, and then you go to each one of those groups and do an SRS, a random sample, within each group. And your, your results will combine all of those groups at the end. And now we've got cluster sampling, which means we look for groups of individuals near each other. It's actually a little bit easier in this case. Um, hopefully, they look, hopefully they resemble little mini populations, like our lunch periods or our study halls, but they may not. Um, and then we randomly select clusters to be in our sample. And then the people or the individuals in those clusters, if you're in one of the selected clusters, everybody in those groups uh, will be in our sample. All right, that is all for these notes. I'll see you in class.